friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads and welcome to the start of my Spookopolathon reading vlogs. So first I have to apologize for all of the background noise you are likely hearing. My dishwasher is going, my composter is going, my dryer is going, and my oven is self-cleaning, although that shouldn't be making any noise. But I am out here in the common area. The kitchen is right behind me, and so you are likely hearing all of that noise going on. I very much apologize about that, but hopefully it is not too terribly distracting. But anyway, today is Sunday, October 1st, and that means it is officially the start of Spookopolathon, which is a month-long readathon hosted and created by Becca from Becca and the Books based on her Bookopoly TBR game, although it is been kind of updated for the spooky season. I have already gone ahead and done my roles for Spookopoly in my October TBR and I will try to remember to link that down below in case you are interested but I started with six roles and we're going to go with those for now and if I end up needing more books for my TBR I will go ahead and roll as I go in these vlogs. So in full transparency I have already started my first book for October but it is not actually a Spookathon book. It was part of the challenge pulls that I pull every single month when I do my TBR. I'm reading False Witness by Karen Slaughter so technically it is not a Spookopoly book and I felt okay starting it a day early but I needed a book to start and I didn't want to start a whole nother book that was not related to October because I started it on Friday night which was like September 29th and I knew that October was just around the corner. I don't really want to say too terribly much about it. It just follows our main character Lee who is a defense attorney and she's living a pretty decent life but she has some secrets in her past and I really don't want to say more about that because it's actually kind of revealed in chapter one what the twist is and what the catalyst is going to be for the rest of the book and I don't want to risk spoiling that. But anyway, Anyway, it is the present day and like I said she is a defense attorney and then one day a case ends up on her desk and the person she's defending actually knows who she is and kind of what she did in her past and it's all coming back to bite her and so I think we're going to try to follow her as she's defending her client but really trying to put him away. For the most part I always really love Karen Slaughter. There's only been like a couple of times when I haven't really enjoyed her books and I think her standalones are the strongest in my opinion and that's what this is. This is a standalone story but it's kind of slow getting off the ground for me overall like this is a very long book for a thriller y'all. It is 18 hours long so that's nine hours of listening time and so it's definitely like slow burn as we're kind of setting the scene, building the foundation, and getting everything together for what I know is going to probably be a very busy later half of the book. I am not quite to the halfway point yet. It is starting to ramp up. It is starting to get more and more interesting and I will never say no to a Karen Slaughter book so I'm here for it. That is what I'm listening to. I'm actually just about to start my all-day Sunday reading sprints. That's why I'm sitting out here in the common area and I didn't move to film this clip because I just cannot be bothered. So I'm about to start those reading sprints. I will go ahead and check in with you when I have some more reading updates or if there's anything going on. I'm not leaving my house today obviously because I'm doing those sprints but as per usual I will take you along when I can. All right check in with you later. second I have just arrived at work and I wanted to go ahead and take a minute to update you before I got into the day. This week is looking to be very busy, kind of obnoxious, and I'm just gonna have to take it one day at a time. I don't necessarily know how much vlog footage I'm going to be getting during this week just because it is going to be so busy. I have to get back in the swing of vlogging because it has been so long and even back when I was doing it regularly I would forget to update you or take you along with me and film what I was doing and it's gonna be even worse now so I apologize if these are a little bit boring. I don't have too much of a reading update at this point. I'm still listening to False Witness. Like I kind of mentioned before, there's not a lot that I can tell you just because I feel like in the very first chapter a lot is revealed and it's not something that's actually on the dust jacket, right? We know that we're going to be following Lee, our main character. We know that she is a successful defense attorney. She has a pretty decent life, but that she is hiding secrets and you kind of find out what that secret is within the first chapter of the book and that's why I can't really say anything more. But essentially it has been many years since all of this stuff went down and now she's been given a case to work on and it turns out this case is to defend somebody against rape and that somebody knows what she did back when she was a young teenager and this guy is kind of playing a game like he knows what she did and he is holding it over her head and basically he wants her to defend him because he knows her secret and he kind of knows that she is going to do anything in her power to get him off so that her secret is not revealed. 
field. And so she's kind of walking a really fine line because she doesn't want him to get off. She knows that he is a sick, sadistic man and he deserves to be in prison. But yet at the same time, if her secret gets out, it's not just going to ruin her life. It's also going to ruin her sister's life and her whole entire family is going to be affected by it. And of course, Karen Slaughter takes you to some very dark, disturbing places. A lot of bad things go down in this story. Lee's sister particularly has had a very rough life. She is a junkie and she doesn't plan on getting clean and she does some pretty bad stuff just to survive, just to survive the trauma and the pain that she is in on a regular basis. But as usual, Karen Slaughter just knows how to tell a story. A very engaging, compulsively readable story. Overall, I will say the pacing on this one is rather slow because again, it is a very, very long book for a thriller. And so I do think that there was a possibility for this to be trimmed down a little bit. But now that we are more into the meat of the story and things are ramping up a little bit, it is getting better and better and better. So like I said, I'm going to be finishing that tonight. And then my next read is going to be Finley Donovan at Knocks Them Dead. That just came in from my library and that will be my first official read for Spookopoly. I landed on the prompt to do a poll pick and it was one of the picks that I chose and that was one that was selected. So that is the one that I'm going to be reading and I really enjoyed the first book and I'm hoping to enjoy the second one. But yeah, I will update you when I've actually finished False Witness and started Finley Donovan and so I will check in with you later. Hey guys, so it has actually been several days since my last update. We are now to the point where I'm going to try to desperately salvage this vlog. I know already that I'm not going to be able to make this into a weekly thing. It's going to have to be a bi-weekly thing for sure, especially since I've basically missed four days of content. It is currently Thursday, October 5th, and I think the last update that I gave you guys was on Monday. However, when I began the week on Monday, I knew it was going to be a difficult week. It was just going to likely be very, very crazy and chaotic. I had some things that I wasn't looking forward to, and now that we are at the end of the workday on Thursday, I've basically made it through the worst of my week. Tomorrow is Friday. I have just turned in my final project for the grad course that I'm in. I've made it through all of the unpleasant work things that I needed to get through and I feel like I'm in a place that I could actually update you. I do have some updates for you. So first and foremost, I did of course finish False Witness by Karen Slaughter. It took me three full days of listening to finish that book. It was a long one, but I did really enjoy it overall. It was just, I feel slower paced than some of her other stories. It took me a little bit longer to get into it. So it wasn't my favorite of her standalones, but of course it's always a strong read when it's Karen Slaughter. Next, I ended up picking up Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead, which was actually the very first book that I was reading for Spookoplathon. And I had a really, really great time with that one y'all. I think I enjoyed it even more than the very first book. If you're not familiar with the Finley Donovan series, it follows of course our main character Finley Donovan and she is a writer. She's a writer of romantic suspense and she's going through a very tough time in her life. Her husband left her so she's a single mom of two. She's struggling financially. She's struggling to get her book written and one day she's in a Panera Bread and she's discussing the plot of her next romantic suspense with her editor and somebody overhears her and mistakes her for a contract killer and so this woman comes up to Finley and says hey my husband is a bad guy and he needs to be taken out and Finley tries to tell her that she's got it all wrong, but the woman won't listen. And curious, Finley kind of goes to stake out this guy and she realizes that he is a really, really bad man. She has no intention of like really doing anything about it, but then he ends up accidentally dead and Finley gets herself into all kinds of shenanigans. And those shenanigans continue in book two when she realizes that somebody has actually put out a contract hit on her ex-husband and she's trying to do everything in her power to figure out who did this and why they want him dead. And she's trying to stop it because she doesn't want her children to be without a father, right? So it's all about what she's going through and it's just really about these quirky characters and all of the shenanigans that they get into and it's just a good time and I'm very much looking forward to continuing in this series. I think I have the third book on the way to me. I think it's in a recent book outlet haul that I've just bought. So anyway y'all I'm actually about to get ready and head to the gym but I just wanted to take a moment and update you since it's been so long since I've done so. I am now currently reading Gone Tonight by Sarah Buchanan. This was a hold that came in from my library and it is also going to satisfy a Spookopolathon prompt to read a spooky book. So I'm definitely getting into the Spookopolathon reads at this point. This is a standalone by Sarah Buchanan. Usually I read the books that she writes with Greer Hendricks. So this is the first standalone that I'm reading from her and I'm really enjoying it. The audiobook is actually narrated by Kate Mara, who is a fantastic actress. So I wasn't really expecting that. It kind of distracted me at first. I will go ahead and tell you more about what this is about a little bit later because like I said, I do have to get changed and go to the gym, but I am enjoying it so far and the way that it's written and even Kate Mara's audiobook narrating style. So, so far so good. But for now y'all, I'll check in with you a little bit later. Hey friends, so I'm actually currently driving to the gym, so I apologize if I'm not looking directly at you, but I just wanted to let you know that while I'm driving, I'm going to try to catch some clips of all of the cool classic cars that are around right now. It's cruising the coast, and that's basically an event that happens in October where people with all of these beautiful classic cars basically drive up and down the Gulf Coast sharing their cars with everybody, and it's a big deal down here. It's a big tourist attraction for sure, and so I'm going to try to catch some of them as I'm driving. Of course, I can't like really do too terribly much because I'm supposed to be paying attention to the road, but I will try to do what I can.
just arrived at the gym and I have a little bit of time before I have to go in. So I thought I would actually update you on Gone Tonight. I am still pretty early into the story because I just started it last night when I was cleaning up the after dinner mess. So I would say that I don't quite know 100% like where this is going, but essentially it is about a mother and a daughter. Ruth is a mother and Catherine is the daughter. And it's really always just been the two of them. Ruth had Catherine when she was very, very young. She was only 17 or 18. She kind of was disowned by her family. And so she just raised up her daughter on her own. They've always been very, very close, but now Catherine, she's growing up, she's in college, and she's about to start a job outside of where they live. And so she's about to really leave her mom for the first time. She's about, I think, 24 years old. And soon her mom gets a diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's. So naturally, Catherine is not going to go take that job. She's going to stay and she's going to care for her mother. However, Catherine does not know her mother as well as she thinks. In fact, her mother is hiding some pretty big secrets from her. Soon, Catherine realizes that her mother might be doing whatever she possibly can to keep Catherine near her. So she's finding out some pretty pretty sinister things about her mom and we're just starting to get into that. Like I said, I feel like I'm very early days and I'm not sure what the trajectory of this story is going to be, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I like how it's being told. So you are following both Ruth and Catherine in the present day time period, but you're also following Ruth as she is kind of documenting her life story in journals for Catherine. This is something that she's never told her daughter before, even though her daughter has always been really curious about her mother's background. So you're seeing Ruth's past in the form of these diary entries basically that she is making for Catherine. So I'm very intrigued to see what is happening. Like what are all the secrets that Ruth is hiding? Why does she not want Catherine to leave? And what is going to happen with Catherine when she discovers all of this stuff? So I'm very intrigued. I'm enjoying it and I'm excited to continue. But for now, y'all, it's time to go die. <music> It is about 8.30 on Saturday morning. I'm here coming at you looking like a hot mess. I just woke up about 45 minutes ago and so I quickly just like threw on some clothes, ate some breakfast, and I'm headed to my nail appointment. But before I go, I wanted to give you an idea of kind of what today was looking like and what was happening and also give you a reading update because I did finish Gone Tonight by Sarah Buchanan. But first, I just want to acknowledge the beautiful weather that I'm having right now here in South Mississippi because it is a cool 65 degrees. The wind is slightly blowing. It is bright. It is sunny. I think we're finally starting to get a hint of fall. Anyway, so as I mentioned, I'm currently on my way to my nail appointment. As soon as I'm done, I'm coming straight home because I have to get ready and I have to film a video or two. And then after that, I have to work on editing the video that's supposed to go up tomorrow. I hope that I'm going to have enough time to do it. I don't have too terribly much left to edit, but sometimes it can take me a while depending on how much I screw up and how much other things distract me while I'm editing because I do still have to worry about like the chores and stuff like that. And normally it wouldn't be a stressor because I would have all night. However, at around four o'clock, I'm heading out because my CrossFit gym is having a 10 year anniversary party and I'm going to celebrate. That's about two hours. And then after that, they're doing some kind of fun little Halloween thing. And I haven't decided whether or not I'm going, but I'm considering it. And if I do go, that means I'm not going to get home until after 9, 9.30. And so I'm not going to have the night to edit. So I really need to do that between when I'm done filming videos and when I leave for the party. So we have a lot going on today, actually. I'm gonna take you along where I can. But first, really quickly, I just wanted to kind of share some of my thoughts on Gone Tonight because 
I did finish and I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I don't know why I didn't know if I was going to enjoy this or not because I have enjoyed the book Sarah Buchanan writes with Greer Hendricks. So I think I might have mentioned this before but we're following Ruth and Catherine. Ruth is the mom, Catherine is the daughter and it's always just kind of been the two of them and Ruth has always been really really secretive about her past. She doesn't want her daughter to basically know anything and her daughter is hungry for this kind of knowledge. So it's kind of about Catherine trying to uncover all of these secrets about her mom without her mom finding out but it's also about her mom trying to keep Catherine close no matter what the cost. So at first you're kind of thinking that's really sinister. You don't understand why she's doing that but then you understand why and it makes a little bit more sense. I really enjoyed kind of following Catherine as she's uncovering these secrets about her mom but yet you're also kind of finding out the secrets from Ruth herself as she's like writing in a diary and things like that. So the way that it was written was really good. It was intriguing. I think the only thing that really got me was I had to suspend my disbelief a little bit in terms of the reason why Ruth has always been so secretive. Like I understand but at the same time I don't and I can't really say much more than that because it would be a spoiler. Ruth has kind of been on the run since she was 16 years old. There was a violent event that was a catalyst for her running away and part of me really doesn't understand why she's been hidden for 24 years. There was just something about that that made me have to suspend my disbelief but still overall like I said it was a good time. It was compulsively readable. I really wanted to find out what the secrets were, what everybody was hiding and all of that and it turned out really well in my opinion. I would certainly be willing to read more from Sarah Buchanan on her own. I'm currently not reading An Unreliable Truth by Victor Methos. That is the third in his Desert Plains series of legal thrillers but in this book we are following different characters than we were for the first two. I started it last night and I'm not vibing with it yet. I'm going to listen to it a little bit more today and see if I want to continue or if I want to pick something else in the meantime and I also don't know if it's because it's like a different narrator and different characters that's kind of throwing me off too. Like it's different than what I've originally experienced with these books which I have loved so we're gonna see. But for now y'all I am running a tad bit late to my appointment so I'm going to stop rambling and I will check in with you a little bit later when I have more updates. and because I'm sitting here in my setup and everything I thought it would be the perfect time to do a bit of a book haul. You should have seen in one of my b-roll clips that I had a stack of book boxes and then after that I actually got my order from Book Outlet so I have a handful of books to share with you today. So I actually have books three and four in the Bromance Book Club series by Lisa K. Adams, Crazy Stupid Bromance, and Isn't It Romantic? These are the last two that I need to read in order to complete the series and luckily they were available on Book Outlet when I went to place my order so I was glad to go ahead and snag these for such a great price. I of course also had to pick up A Ghost of Caribou which is the third book in Alice Henderson's Dr. Alex Carter series. If you've been watching my channel recently, y'all know how much I love the series so much. Dr. Alex Carter is a wildlife biologist whose goal is to basically save all of the wildlife. And in each book, she's out kind of doing like some conservation projects and there are always dangerous people who want to stop her from doing what she is supposed to do. So she's in very high stakes, life-threatening situations and I absolutely love them so much. I'm very excited to dive into this, especially given what we found out after the second book. And I do know that she has at least one more book coming out in the series and I'm here for it. So I was super excited to see this on Book Outlet. I also picked up America's First Daughter by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy. I read My Dear Hamilton by them for the amazing readathon back in August and that book blew me away. It was very lengthy. It was almost 700 pages which is extremely long for a historical fiction but I absolutely adored it and by the end of it I was actually sad that it was finished. It made me sad that I wasn't ever going to know Eliza Hamilton in real life because I just admire her so greatly and I absolutely adore what Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy were able to do with that story. They just wrote it so beautifully. This actually follows Patsy Jefferson who was Thomas Jefferson's eldest daughter and I'm just really excited to see what they're able to do with the story. Of course I also had to pick up My Darkest Prayer by S.A. Cosby. This is the only other S.A. Cosby that I do not own and I'm trying to get through all of his backlist titles because I loved Razorblade Tears so much. I plan on reading his newest release in October. I don't really know what this one's about but I don't really need to but I will go ahead and read this. It says whether it's working at his cousin's funeral home or tossing around the local riffraff at his favorite bar, Nathan Waymaker is a man who knows how to handle the bodies. A former Marine and Sheriff's deputy, Nathan has built a reputation in his small 
southern town as a man who can help when no one else can. When a beloved local minister is found dead, his parishioners ask Nathan to investigate, but things get complicated and Nathan must use all of his varied skills to navigate the murky waters of small town corruption, even as dark secrets of his own threaten to come to the surface. Sounds phenomenal. I'm here for it. I love this man. I am so excited to read more from him and I had to snag this when I saw it. Speaking of S.A. Cosby and his newest release, I did also manage to snag All the Sinners Bleed. This is actually the book that caused me to place the order because I did have a cart full of other books, but none of them were like urgent for me. I was like, I really do want these and these are at great prices, but I don't think I need to hit purchase now. And then I saw this one come into stock and I was like, okay, add to cart, purchase. And of course this is on my October TBR and I cannot be more hyped to get to this one. I also picked up Alex Finley's newest release, What Have We Done? I recently read Every Last Fear and I really enjoyed that one and I want to see what more he can do. I hear a lot of great things about him as an author and because I enjoyed that one, I decided to go ahead and pick this one up as well. And then the last one in my book outlet hall, Falling by TJ Newman. I have heard so much about TJ Newman. I guess she was a former flight attendant and she is now an author and a lot of her stories are high stakes suspense thrillers that take place on airplanes. I've been hearing a lot of great things about her newest release called Drowning and so when I saw this one was on book outlet, I was like, okay, let me go ahead and give it a try even though I'm a little bit trepidatious because I don't always love fast paced suspense thrillers. Like those things work well for me on the screen but not necessarily in a book. This says, you just boarded a flight to New York. There are 143 other passengers on board. What you don't know is that 30 minutes before the flight, your pilot's family was kidnapped. For his family to live, everyone on your plane must die. The only way the family will survive is if the pilot follows his orders and crashes the plane. Enjoy the flight. Oh, that just sounds absolutely phenomenal. So I'm going to give this a shot and see what I think. Next, I caved and I actually bought the beautiful new Illumicrate special editions of Strange the Dreamer. That original Strange the Dreamer cover, which you can't really find anymore anymore, is like probably one of the most beautiful books that I own. And so when I decided to read the series, I knew that I had to have that. When I found out that they were coming out with actual completely customized special editions, I just had to jump on them because they are stunning. Here is Strange the Dreamer. You have Sarai there on the cover. Look how stunning. Look at those edges, y'all. I cannot even there's the back. Here is the naked hardcover. It is full of gold foiling. You have the moth there. There is the spine. Nothing is on the back. And then look at those end pages, y'all. And then you have beautiful end pages featuring Sarai and Laszlo on the back, which I love. Then here's Muse of Nightmares. You've got Laszlo there looking like a badass. There's the spine, the back, and then of course, beautiful stunning sprayed edges. The naked hardcover is orange with silver foiling. There's the spine. And again, nothing on the back. Here are the front end pages for this one. Look how beautiful that is y'all. And then again, these beautiful end pages. It's slightly spoilery, but if you have never read this story, you probably have no idea what's going on in this scene. So I'm going to just roll with it. I just love this depiction of Laszlo and Sarai right here. Oh my gosh. These are absolutely beautiful. And even though I will probably never reread the series, I am so grateful to have these beautiful editions on my shelves. And then finally, I just have my book of the month selections for the month of October. Of course, I had to grab The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. I absolutely loved Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. And even though I do plan on trying to snag the Fairy Loop special edition, which is coming out in December of this book. I did want to go ahead and have this one as well because Spells for Forgetting is in this edition. I just know that this is going to be another wonderfully atmospheric story. It says, in the small town of Jasper, North Carolina, June Farrow is waiting for fate to find her. Farrow women are known for their thriving flower farm and for the mysterious curse that has plagued their family line. The whole town remembers the madness that led to Susanna Farrow's disappearance, leaving her daughter June to be raised by her grandmother and haunted by rumors. It's been a year since June started seeing and hearing things that aren't there. Faint wind chimes, a voice calling her name, and a mysterious door appearing out of nowhere. Signs of what June has always known is coming. But June is determined to end the curse once and for all, even if she must sacrifice the hope of love in a family of her own. After her grandmother's death, June discovers a series of cryptic clues regarding her mother's disappearance, except these only lead to more questions. But could the door she once assumed was a hallucination be the answer she's been searching for? The next time it appears, June realizes she can touch it and walk through the threshold. And when she does, she embarks on a journey that will not only change both the past and the future, but also uncover the lingering mysteries of her small town and entangle her heart in an epic star-crossed love. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. I trust Adrian Young and I am hyped to get to this one. I also picked up Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. So I've actually never read anything by Alex e. Harrow. I hear such amazing things about her stories and the premise of this one actually really intrigued me. So I went ahead and picked it up. And if I do enjoy this one, I will go ahead and read more from her in the future. This says Opal is a lot of things, orphan, high school dropout, full-time cynic, and a part-time cashier. But above all, she's determined to find a better life for her younger brother, Jasper. One that gets him out of Eden, Kentucky, a town remarkable for only two things, bad luck and East Starling, the reclusive 19th century author of The Underland who disappeared over a hundred years ago. All she left behind were dark rumors and her home. Everyone agrees that it's best to ignore the uncanny mansion and its misanthropic heir, Arthur, almost everyone anyway. Opal has been obsessed with the Underland since she was a child. When she gets the chance to step inside Starling House and make some extra cash for her brother's escape fund, she can't resist. But sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Starling House and Arthur's own nightmares have become far too real, as Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own 
ghosts, Opal realizes that she might finally have found a reason to stick around and now she'll have to fight. I'm just really intrigued by the premise. I want to see what Alexi e. Harrow can do. So I'm going to give this one a shot. And then I went ahead and picked up the main thriller release for October, When I'm Dead by Hannah Morrissey. So from what I'm understanding, this is actually the third in her Black Harbor series, but they can be read as standalones. You don't have to read one before the other, which is good because I wasn't planning on reading the other two before going into this one. I believe the other two are called Hello Transcriber and The Widowmaker, which I do know that Audrey from Chapter and Converse really, really enjoys. So I think I'm going to go ahead and give this one a try. And then if I enjoy it, I will go backwards, but I'm not going to try to read the other two before I read this, but I'm going to give it a shot. All right, y'all, that is it. That took me a little bit longer to film than I was intending, but now I need to go ahead and go edit the video that is supposed to go up tomorrow and hope that I can pull it off. So that is what I'm going to do. As always, I will check in when I have more updates. Hi friends, happy Sunday and happy start of week two of Book Oplifon. So yesterday was primarily like B-roll footage of me running my errands, going to the gym party. And I did mention that I had started an Unreliable Truth by Victor Methos, but I didn't really tell you what it was about. This actually follows different main characters than the main character that we've been following for the first two books. The first two books followed federal prosecutor Jess Yardley. And in book two, we were introduced to a defense attorney named Dylan Astor. And I really liked him in book two because I thought he was a master in the courtroom. And so in this book, we are actually completely following Dylan Astor as he decides to take on this very high profile case. There's a man who is accused of butchering three young kids who were like in their late teens, early twenties. Not only did he brutally kill them, but he like took some of their body parts and he posed them doing lewd acts. And it was just like absolutely horrific. And there was one of them that got away. She ended up like diving off a cliff in order to save herself. And she sustained massive injuries, but she survived. She just can't really identify who did this to her. And the man who was accused of doing it was actually pulled over on a highway covered in blood. And he instantly confessed to doing this. And Dylan is intrigued by the case. So he takes it on. And after meeting with a guy named Arlo, he is pretty convinced that Arlo did not do this. Arlo is severely mentally ill. He suffers from schizophrenia. And he really thinks that Arlo is confessing to these crimes for the publicity because he and his wife and his young daughter are struggling. He knows that his mental illness is just getting worse and worse. And eventually he's just going to be a burden on them. And I don't know if you can hear Domino, but she's breathing very loudly. <laughs> She's like snoring. So I apologize about that. But anyway, Dylan becomes convinced that Arlo is innocent. And so he takes on the case because Arlo is about to face the death penalty and he does not want that to happen. But Arlo is not doing himself any favors because he wants to be convicted. He wants the notoriety. He wants to write a book on his experiences. So Dylan is defending a client who really doesn't want to be defended. So on the outset, the premise of this sounds very, very fascinating, but I just was not into this book until we started getting probably about 75% in when really all the drama was happening in the courtroom and a lot of the stuff is starting to be revealed and you find out the truth and all of that stuff. But for the majority of the book, I was just kind of only mildly paying attention to it. I was never connected to the story. Now, I don't know if that was a me thing or a book thing. I don't know whether I was just distracted while listening to it. I don't know whether I just found it jarring not following Jess Yardley anymore and I just really wanted to follow her and I didn't want to follow Dylan Astor. Um, I don't know if it was because I just wasn't connecting to the storylines. Like I wasn't really jiving with the overall plot of this one as much as I was the first two. But I did, like I said, ultimately end up in enjoying it a lot by the end of it because I like the direction that Victor Methos took it. It just took me a minute to get there. I think I'm going to settle on like a three or a 3.5 for this one. It wasn't as strong as the other two for me. I don't know if there are going to be any other books in this series, but if there are, I will definitely consider picking them up because I've really enjoyed Victor Methos's writing in the past. I don't necessarily think that I'm going to start anything else today because I'm kind of feeling foggy is the best way to put it. Like, I don't think if I were to start anything now, I would be able to seriously concentrate on it. I think I need a little bit of a break. I went immediately from Gone Tonight into this one and then I was having those concentration issues. I don't know if this is a sign that I'm getting into a slump or if it's a sign that I need to read something different. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is just maybe spend the rest of my day listening to booktube or YouTube might be put on some Kendall Ray true crime. I'm not entirely sure but I don't think I'm going to start another book right now because I don't want to risk going into another reading slump. Um, so I'm just going to kind of take it easy and clear my mind. I am very very tired. My brain is tired after this past week and I think that I just need to kind of like go easy on myself and not do something that's too terribly taxing on the brain. That was a long rambly update so I'm gonna go ahead and go finish baking the cookies that I'm baking but I of course will update you when I have at least another reading update so I'll check in soon. Hi 
Hi everyone, happy Monday. I am about to go to work and I am tired, y'all. I just feel like I could go home and sleep for a week. I feel like I do just need a week at home, not leaving my house in order to just kind of like recover. But I just kind of wanted to come on here and give you an update because my last update, I said that I wasn't going to start a book. And for the most part yesterday, I just spent, after I finished An Unreliable Truth, I just spent watching some Kendall Ray true crime videos on YouTube and just kind of gave myself some space. And then after dinner, we watched an episode of our show and I kind of felt like I was ready to start a book. So I ended up starting From Below by Darcy Coates. This again is another spookopoly option. It was the book that was on the chance card that I selected. And so this is a horror novel basically that's set mostly under the ocean. It follows a documentarian who is also a diver and a team of other divers who are going down below the ocean to view the wreck of the RMS Arcadia which sunk like a hundred years prior. Nobody knows why it sunk or how and it had gone like alarmingly off course I believe and so nobody really knew where the wreck was until it was discovered by accident and so now this documentary filmmaker is kind of going down to document the ship but of course there are some sinister and unusual things happening we're also getting flashbacks to right before the ship sank and so you're kind of seeing what happened that caused the ship to sink in all honesty I don't have too terribly many thoughts I read The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates a few weeks ago and I remember kind of feeling the same like the story over Overall, it's interesting, but I'm not connecting to it. I find it very easy to zone in and out of the story. I'm definitely not as interested in the past timeline, like right before the Arcadia sank, as I am in the present timeline, as they are like under the water exploring the ship, because that is a literal nightmare to me. But so I'm not fully invested in the story yet. I'm not connected to it, but I'm going to go into work. I'm going to have several hours where I'm not listening to it at all. And hopefully by the time I pick it back up again, I will be more interested in it. I mean, I don't hate it. There's nothing inherently wrong about the story. And like I said, I'm really intrigued by what is happening but there's just something that's keeping me from fully connecting to it and being actively interested in picking it up so we're gonna see what will happen after I have a few hours of distance for now I'm gonna go ahead and go into work and start my day I'll give you more of an update once I have one regarding the reading but for now it's time to start the work week hey everyone I'm currently driving to work I hope that you can hear me over the sound of the car but I thought I would just go ahead and do a little bit of a chit chat update in kind of a different format so I don't know if I've officially decided to hard DNF it or soft DNF it but last night I made the decision to stop reading From Below by Darcy Coates and instead I went ahead and picked up Finger Lickin' 15 by Janet Ivanovich which I have already basically finished. I only have around 15 minutes of listening time left in the audiobook. I think that I'm kind of feeling slumpy. I don't know if it's a slump. I, I just know that there's nothing that I'm in the mood to read at the moment and I'm feeling very distracted while I'm reading. But typically if I'm in a slump, the idea of reading is very stressful to me. Like I don't want to read at all and I don't feel that way. It's just I don't know what to read. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm about to finish Finger Lickin' 15 and I don't think I wanna pick up anything immediately. I thought that I was picking up the right thing when I picked up From Below by Darcy Coates, but that just was not grabbing my attention. And I felt like if I kept listening to it, I was gonna go into a slump. But again, I don't think that's a book thing. I think that's a me thing. I don't really think that there's inherently anything wrong with the story. It was just all plot and no character development. And y'all know that I'm a character driven reader. And so when it's all plot like that, it just, it doesn't always work for me. And it especially was not working for me now. I don't know. I think I might need to take a break for a day or two and just not read anything. I'm not entirely sure sure but I just know that the idea of picking up something new right this minute is not entirely appealing but I want something to listen to I have no idea what I'm going to do but I just wanted to come on and give you a quick update because I basically started and finished a new book since the last update because it was so quick but that's another book off of my Spookopolithon TBR I'm gonna go ahead and finish my drive to work turn back on finger like 15 and I'll chat with you when I know what I'm doing It is Wednesday, October 11th. It's a pretty chill day here at work. I don't have much going on. It's also a very gloomy, gloomy day outside. So I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to go ahead and come on here and give you an update because I actually do have one. I think one of my last clips was like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna read. I don't feel like reading anything. I was having an existential crisis basically. But luckily, like halfway through my work day, I started to feel really in the mood to read something. Like it started to feel wrong that I didn't already have a book in progress. So I went ahead and 
picked up All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby because that is the last book really that I need to read for Spookoplathon at this point. So I'm probably going to try to roll again tonight because I won't finish All the Sinners Bleed tonight, but I will finish it tomorrow and I want to be prepared. I am just going to forewarn you right now that there are all the trigger warnings in this book. There is a school shooting that's involved. There is a lot of violence against children, murder against children, raping children. There is a lot of talk about racism in this book as well. There's a lot going on. S.A. Cosby's books are very, very dark, but he is such a beautiful writer. I feel like his writing is so incredibly beautiful and poetic, but also without being purpley. You know what I mean? I am really enjoying this story so far as much as one can enjoy a story about this. So basically this is set in Charon County, Virginia. We are following our main character Titus, who is the first black sheriff of this county. As you can imagine, there is a lot of controversy over this. He experiences a lot of racism still even to this day. It is the South. It's a small county. But the primary story centers around a school shooting. A young black man went into the local high school and shot a teacher. Nobody else was hurt. Basically, as he was coming out of the school and Titus was trying to talk him down, he was shot and killed. So basically, Titus has to have his people undergo investigation to make sure that the shooting was good. But also, he's investigating the teacher that was shot. And some very upsetting things come to light about this teacher. I'm not going to say anything more about that. I honestly don't know what the trajectory of the story is going to be. Like, I don't know what the ultimate plot is, the resolution, and things like that. I just know that these are some very dark topics, y'all. So be warned before you go into the story. If you've never read an essay, Cosby, please just be warned. I also appreciate the way that he is able to talk about race. He never makes it feel like he's preaching at you. He never makes it feel like his main mission for the book is to educate a reader on the topic of race. He just so seamlessly incorporates it into his stories because it's naturally what his main characters are dealing with and it just works so well. I am always impressed with this man and his writing and like I said I have no idea where this book is going to go but I am looking forward to finishing it. So I will be listening to more of it on my way home and then while I'm cooking dinner and then of course I will be finishing it up tomorrow and we'll do another Spookopoly roll to see what I get next. But for now y'all I'm on my lunch. It's time to get back to work so I will catch up with you a little bit later. Okay y'all so as promised I'm going to go ahead and do another Spookopoly roll so that when I finish All the Sinners Bleed I am ready with my next book. Now I'm only down to one die because I'm pretty sure Nola took the other one. I don't have proof, but I'm fairly sure. I mean, y'all witnessed in my TBR video how she literally came up while I was filming and tried to take my font. So I'm going to have to roll this die twice to get another number. So my last roll landed me on highest rated. And so we're going to go ahead and move from there. So let's see what we get. Six. And three, so that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Green on the cover, and that's literally what it sounds like. I have to read a book that has mostly green on the cover, or maybe even green in the name or the title. So I'm gonna have to go and see what I can find, and I will let you know what I pick when I've actually picked it. Saturday, October 14th, and I am just here to wrap up this vlog. It has been a couple of days since my last update, and that is for a couple of reasons. One, in all honesty, not to be TMI, but I'm having some uncomfortable lip issues, and it's just unattractive overall, and it doesn't feel great to talk and smile. So I've just kind of not been really interested in being in front of the camera. There's also not been very much going on that I wanted to film. And additionally, I do think that I have plenty of footage for this vlog already. And so since nothing interesting was happening, I didn't really feel the need to like include any bits and pieces of my daily life because I think this vlog is already going to be long enough. But in one of those last updates, I believe I did mention that I had started All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby, which I have since finished and I gave a four stars. I just love S.A. Cosby so much. Love his writing style. It is lyrical and beautiful without being purpley or too flowery and it works very well for the books that he writes. I just think he's an incredibly talented author. I love the stories that he creates. They are definitely dark and harrowing. There are a lot of trigger warnings in this story, so be mindful of that. But I'm very glad that I read this. I have his other two backlist stories, which I will be getting to at some 
some point in the future because I plan to read basically anything that this man writes going forward. So I am super glad that I was able to get to this and I definitely recommend. And you will have also seen in one of the previous clips that I did another Spookopolathon roll because I'm basically getting to the end of my TBR at this point. And so I landed on the prompt to read a book with mostly green on the cover. And for that, I actually selected Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. Yes, this is a historical fiction, but I did feel like I needed a break from all of the suspense thrillers that I was reading. I needed something that was going to kind of clear my palette and prepare me for more suspense thrillers. And this is definitely a different vibe. So there is a present day perspective. We're following Kendra in modern day Oxford, England. She's actually attending Oxford. And for her final project, she is trying to interview somebody who survived the London Blitz. She is given the contact information of Isabel McFarland, who has always been kind of notoriously quiet on her experiences during the war. She's never given an interview to anybody. She's never even really talked about it to her family, but it seems like she's kind of willing to reveal her secrets. So she's allowing Kendra to interview her. And at the start of the interview, Kendra realizes that Isabel has been holding some pretty big secrets. And then we're flashing back to 1940s England and we're primarily following Emmy Downtree. She is 15 years old. She has a younger sister, Julia, and a mom who is very young. Her mom was only like 16 when she had Julia. So there's definitely an interesting dynamic between the two. Emmy dreams of owning her own bridal store. She sketches wedding dresses and it is one day her dream to own her own bridal store filled with her own design. And she is just starting to kind of make that dream come true. She is working at a bridal store when all of a sudden her mom tells her that she and Julia need to be sent away because London is at risk of being bombed by Hitler. She's not happy about this at all. She fights it. She doesn't want to go anywhere because her dreams are about to start becoming true. But she and her sister Julia are sent to live with an elderly lady in a Cotswold cottage. And things are actually really going well for them. But again, Emmy does not want to be there. And when she hears from the person who owned the bridal shop and is told that her cousin actually kind of wants Emmy to apprentice with him, she sneaks off in the middle of the night to return to London to be the apprentice to this designer. And she doesn't plan to take her little sister Julia with her. But when Julia discovers what she's about to do, and she demands that Emmy takes her. And I'm just now getting to that part in the story. And I do believe that this is kind of where the book takes a turn. Like Emmy's decision on whether or not to take Julia is going to have huge ramifications for both of their lives. This so far is definitely not grabbing my attention as much as the other ones have in the past. But I do think that as we get further into the story, I'm going to enjoy it more and more. So I just wanted to give you a brief update on what I am currently reading. I will absolutely be finishing it this weekend. All right, y'all, I really need to stop talking because I have some videos to film. I desperately need to edit this vlog. So I'm gonna end this here and I will see you in the next one.